Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I tell you what. I have been so, my cup is full. Let me put it that way. And running over. Hallelujah. Just to see how the children are bringing praises to Jesus. All of my adventurers, you need to know how much we love you, how much we appreciate you, but even better than that, you need to know that Jesus loves you more. Amen? And uh, to all of our, our um, adventurous lead leaders, Sister Alicia, thank you so much. And all of her assistants, Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, every second and every fourth Sabbath, they're here. And they're working with the children. Most of us, we don't get to see that work. Are you with me? But there's some hard work going on behind the scenes. And I just want to let you know that we truly appreciate you, all of you. And Jesus even more. All right? And then even behind our teachers, we have our parents. All the parents, uh, you need to know how much we appreciate you as well and love you. And we thank you for how you're working with the children. Thank you so much. Friends, this is church. Amen? Amen. This is church. And... I was actually blessed this morning when I stopped and gave my, uh, one of my Sabbath school teachers a hug and asked her, how is her Sabbath school class going? And she was just bubbling. You know why? Some of you parents have started to bring your kids back to Sabbath school. Hallelujah. And though it might not be there yet, as I would like to see it full and bustling over, at least we can see that our, our teachers are happy with your students, with the students in the class, and kids are being nurtured, all right? So when you plan to come to church, remember, church starts at what time? 9, 4, 9, 9 we can work with that. 9.45. But bring the children. Because we do have teachers here willing to help them on this journey. And so again, thank you, Adventurous Club. And thank you, Sister Casey. All right, for your leadership and, and blessing our club as well. And where's Brother Chancey? Brother Chancey and our Pathfinders. Praise the Lord. Garland is moving, you know. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. This past week, we had a funeral service for Brother John Price. And the family, Sister Mary and Brother Giovanni, wanted to share with the Garland Church their great appreciation for all of your support, all of your prayers, and those who came, those who could come. I know a lot of you would have loved to be there, um, but those who came were there to just be a support to the family. And um, we just want to continue to pray for them, okay? That's for Sister Mary, Maria, sorry, and uh, Brother Giovanni, his son. And just want to welcome all of our visitors. You're visiting here. Uh, we love you. Keep coming. Don't make this just a one-off thing. Good people here. Godly people here. Those who are visiting us online as well, I want to welcome you all. And um, let's just pause for a brief moment and ask for the Lord to share with us a few of his words. 
that he feels can be a blessing to us today. All right? Let's bow your heads with me. And let's ask the Lord to bless our time. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful time of worship. Just embracing the children and watching how you're working through them. Our hearts are filled with joy. And we just want to say praises to your name. You're truly a good God. Even then, even in times, Father, when we might feel alone, we know your presence is with us. Father, I just ask that you would, you would teach us this afternoon. Share with us your words that can spring forth life within us that can help us as we face this week ahead to live a life that brings glory to you and to live a life that reflects Jesus. Take all that I am into your hands. Speak to me and through me. And may as we hear your words, may we not only be edified by them, but may we also be changed by them. In Jesus' name, amen. World Adventures Day, in fact, there are churches all over the globe that is celebrating this day, celebrating our children and their, all of their work for Jesus, their service for Jesus, and all that they have learned. You see all those badges? Elder Stewart, you see them? Yeah, they're growing, you know? I wonder what, let me ask, in Pathfinders, uh, Brother Chansey, do they, do they add those badges to the Pathfinders collage or? No. Okay, they go with a new one. <laughs> so, so guess what? You got to make sure, adventurers, you get as many badges as you can now. Because by the time you get to Pathfinder age, guess what? You can't wear those anymore. Is that a deal? Is that a deal over here? All right, all right. I really like the, 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 the theme for the Adventurers World Day, Jesus knows. Jesus knows. I, you know, when I got this assignment and I read those words, you know, it pierced my heart. It, it's like it rang so true to me. Because at times you can find where I'm going through situations and I feel nobody really knows what I'm actually experiencing. But Jesus knows. Are you with me? Jesus knows. And in this text, in John chapter 6, Jesus is going at that theme. He's actually driving to somewhere. And he wanted his disciples to always remember. He knows exactly what they're going through. No matter if nobody else cares. He knows. Turn in your Bibles with me. And let's pick up the text in John chapter 6. I really have just two points this afternoon that I want you to grab. <laughs> My sister said amen. <laughs> and I'm going to reply back to her and say amen as well. <laughs> 
But let's pick up the text here in John chapter 6. And I want to begin right here in verse... Let me start with verse 4. Verse 4. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he saw a great what? Multitude. multitude coming towards him. He said to Philip, where shall we buy what? Bread that these may eat. Does that mean Jesus knows some things that his disciples did not? So he's, he's watching this group of people. And you know, 5,000 people, that's a lot of people. But that's only 5,000 men that was coming at Jesus. Many of the scholars who read this text surmise that the total amount of people there was something in the range of about 15,000 people when you add the women and children. Are you with me? And they're all coming at Jesus. But when he looked at them, he wasn't too concerned about how many they were. He saw something that no one else caught. And he said to Philip, Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may what? Eat. Jesus knew that they were hungry. Are you with me? He knew that. In fact, I would say to you today, he saw that they needed bread, but for us, that bread can be a need. Are you with me? He saw that they need bread. But Jesus is seeing you as well, and he's seeing me, and he's saying, listen, you have a need, and I know what it is. Are you with me? So that bread that he's asking Philip to go get could be Jesus. You know how much I need forgiveness. Jesus, you know how much I feel so overwhelmed with guilt and shame. That's my bread. Are you with me? Jesus, you know how much I need healing. I mean, the doctors, they've they really tried and they're still trying, but for some reason, it seems like only someone greater than these doctors know truly what I really need. Are you with me? I mean, they are bright, they are brilliant. But Jesus, you know, I need something divine. My house is really in tatters, it's falling apart. Jesus, this is my bread. And I, I'm coming to you. And thank God, you know exactly what I need. You see, he saw the people needing bread. But Jesus is trying to let us know that he knows what's going on in our hearts. He knows our greatest need right now. Philip, go get some bread. Jesus is very smart. <laughs> he knew that Philip could not get enough bread for 15,000 people. Are you with me? But he's trying to let Peter understand something else. But truth be told, before we rush to that, I do have to ask a question. What is your bread? 
that you want Jesus to see today? What is your bread that you would love for him to acknowledge right now? I know my bread. I know my greatest need right now. And you know what I must say? I've been bringing it to him. Not just on a day-to-day basis. Not just on a one-day basis. But constantly. And you know what I can say today? Hallelujah. I see some movements. Amen. Come on, y'all. Amen. You know, he hears, he hears us when we talk to him. Are you with me? But the, the issue is sometimes we feel so prideful. We don't even want to go to him. We want to go about our business, do whatever we want to do, because we want to do these things. Until we fall into that great need, then we come to him. But given the fact that we're right here before Jesus, right now, he, knowing our very hearts, how about saying, Jesus, here's my bread. What a theme Jesus knows. I think about in my life, some things that I brought to Jesus because I knew he knows. There's a term that we use. If I say, do you feel me? You know what that means? Do you feel me? It means, listen, do you really understand me? Do you understand what I'm going through? Jesus Do you feel me? You know what he says? Yes. Yes. Right here in this church, and over 20 odd years of ministry, I've learned to just be with the people. In the good times, But also, in the rough times. Are you with me? Because that's life as a church. And you know what I've noticed over all those years? I've learned first that I'm simply an under-shepherd. Because there's so many visits that I've done. Once I leave that home and I go into the car, my first expression, Lord, Help us. My first expression. Lord, please help us. And you know what I've seen in so many cases? I've watched Jesus over the years turn incredibly tough circumstances into amazing circumstances. Things that you would think what were so impossible, Jesus somehow found a solution. Hallelujah. And he always do it. So I've just learned being a pastor to just be one who is always as much as I can. My wife would tell you about my, one of my favorite words. Just Relax. Just relax, man. (laughs) Let Jesus take care of it. He knows what you're going through, and he will help you. Hallelujah. If anybody else don't know, he does. David said he he can't even hide from God. He said if if he tried to go to the bottom of the sea, guess what? Guess who he's going to find there? Can you imagine God is going to be there? We can't hide from God. Nothing we can hide from him. So my does well, guess what? Just be upfront with him. Lord, I'm facing a situation right now in my family that I have no power to change. You be my God. 
would you step in and help me? And maybe someone is here today who really needs the help of Jesus. Knowing that he knows, how about invite him to come in? The second point here, given the fact that we can't hide from him and he knows exactly what you're going through, look at how he treats people who really are in a need. You ready? Let's continue the text. The Bible said in verse 7, Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have what? A little. In other words, eight months of working cannot even provide any major help for just one person to help, to help that person, right? Help a little of the bunch of people that were there. And then he said, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who have what? Five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Of course, that's impossible. How is that going to help? Ready for this? Jesus then Jesus said, make the what? <laughs> I heard, so, so my sister here is reading from the King James Version here. And I remember reading that. It says, make the men sit down, right? And I was like, whew. You're going to make the men sit and the, the kids and the ladies keep standing? I mean, Jesus, what are you trying to say? Make the men sit. So the version says, make the people sit down. But you know, listen, back in those times, and I think it's a good practice, y'all. You ready for this? Back in those times, men were leaders. In fact, God would use the men to do things that were naturally seen as that's their job. Are you with me? So make the men sit, what Jesus was saying. If the men sit, guess what's going to happen to everybody in the crowd? They're going to follow. Are you with me? Make the men lead. So as soon as the men start to sit, guess what's going to happen? The women will also sit. Children will also say, men, I need you to hear this. Because if you practice it, everyone will fall. Now there was much grass in the place. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> there was some cushion. <laughs> so the men sat down in number and five thousand about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So they were filled. He said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is what? Is lost. What a miracle. You need to know, and I need to know. Jesus knows our circumstances. It also means that he knows the solution. Come on, y'all. If he knows exactly what you're going through, he knows how to fix it. But when he fixes it, he fixes it in a way that man can't. In other words, Jesus knows how to take a little and multiply it. Amen. He took five and two, five loaves and two fishes, and guess what? Turn it into a mass of food that could feed 15,000 people. That was a miracle. Amen. And someone here needs that kind of solution Amen. today for something that you're going through. 
something that's happening in your world where no man can fix it. But somebody who can do something like this. When people talk about Jesus as if it, 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 it is, is, he's not adequate, as if he's not real, as if he's, uh, the, the Jesus thing is foolishness. Get a chance to sit with those people when they're about to die. And then ask them, what's next? What's next? Do you know what the answer would be? Nothing. But that's different with Jesus, isn't that true? So much different. What's next? A resurrection is next. What's next? An eternal life living on a new planet where there's no sin. Amen. There's no death. A new earth. Can you imagine that, folk? All of that is promised to all those who keep faith in Jesus Christ today. Amen. Jesus not only knows our problems, he knows how to fix them in a supernatural way. Amen. And I here can testify of that. Amen. Anyone here can join me? Amen. Anyone here can raise your hand and say, Pastor, I can also testify of that. Because I brought some stuff to Jesus. And I've watched him work that thing around and around. And the outcome could not have been of anything that involved the touch of man. It had to be God. That's how he works, folk. He knows exactly the time when you're crying, searching for a solution. And he knows how to fix it miraculously. The theme says Jesus knows. And the answer is, he knows, but he'll take care of you. Amen. Those people ate food that day. You, you, you think it was an all-inclusive uh, kind of affair, right? All you can eat. They ate so much food that day, they end up leaving so much behind. Filled and running over. Wouldn't you say they were satisfied, Sister Alicia? Yeah. Did Jesus satisfy them that day? They felt, so, they felt so good that day that the Lord blessed them. Satisfied their need. And if he did that for them, he can do it for you today. He can do it all for you. So now, the question is, is there anyone here with bread that they like for Jesus to multiply? Is there anyone here with a particular need that you would like for God to solve, to multiply, and to bless? I don't know who you are, but I'm going to start, given the fact that I'm already standing right here, by asking you if you would join this preacher with your bread and stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, our Creator, we we 
We're standing in your presence, in your temple this afternoon. Because of what your word has done to our hearts today, it has spoken to us. And we are responding simply because of what your Holy Spirit is doing in our hearts. Every person here today and there are those who are watching as well, we're all responding with our own bread, our own need. And Father, sure enough, there are different needs within this church family. And we're standing because we believe we're standing before the God of heaven and earth. The God who created us, the God who provided our salvation from sin through Jesus Christ. And so we come to you this afternoon and we ask that you take all of our bread, all of the needs that we have before you today. And we ask in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would provide the solutions. The solutions that we know are miraculous. They seem impossible for man, but to you, they're possible. Take our bread in the name of Jesus and answer your people. For we ask this in Jesus' name, that the church of the living God say, Amen, amen and Amen.